25,000 men and women work for the UK border agency. At home and abroad, their job is to seek out the lawbreakers and imposters who don't have a right to be here. They are the UK border force. Tonight, the fraudsters trying to cheat their way out of Nigeria. Do you know this person? No. This person is your cousin. It's a risky business in Calais. Hello, mate. Hello. Hello. And in London's West End, enforcement officers question a Mongolian chef. You can't find any trace in your systems. You're not able to show me a passport. I find it all quite difficult to believe, yeah? In the past 10 years, Glasgow has become a hotspot for migrants. A recent report found at least 70 different nationalities now living in the city. Not all of these newcomers are here legally. The UK Border Agency has enforcement teams who seek out immigration offenders and remove them from Britain. but their job is made harder by a racket in forged documentation worth millions, helping illegal immigrants to hide under false identities. Hi there, can you open the door, please? Just don't make behind it. Yeah. Hi there, is immigration, can you open the door, please? Immigration officer Kerry McVeigh and her team are at the address of a man they believe has overstayed his visa by more than a year. Sir, I can't see you standing there. Open the door now. We have a warrant to enter the premises, so if you don't open the door, we will force it. The target today is a man named John Moses. Hi there. Hi, Sam, you're just wait. Order me, please. Have a chat with you, OK? Is there anyone else on the premises? Sorry? Okay, what's your name, sir? My, my name is Ola Tunde. Ola Tunde. Ola Tunde, Ishola. Mm hmm And your date of birth? Um, 26. Mm hmm Uh, 26 of, um... Uh... 26 of what? What month? <laughs> you know, give me a date of birth. Can you sit down no, for me? You sit, sit down. down. You sit down. Who's, who's, who's that person? That's Mr John Moses. That's my uncle. That's your uncle? Yeah. And where is your uncle at the moment? He's not around. I mean, he's not around. He's, he's not, not around. Are you sure it's not you? No, no, it's my uncle. All right, OK. Are you going to give me a date of birth, all the day? I don't know, no, I don't know, because I don't OK, know have you got a passport? Right, my house. Eh? Passport? Sorry? Do you have your passport in this address? I lost my passport. You lost your passport. Have you got a photocopy? Any identification whatsoever? Identification? Mm-hmm. I lost my passport. Right, can you just listen to me just now, Alatunde, OK? I'm arresting you as a suspected immigration offender, OK? okay. You're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say will be noted and may be using evidence at a later stage. Oh. You're now under arrest. The target that we had, he was asked about, do you know that person? And he claimed it was his uncle and he's not here at the moment. And he couldn't provide any further details as to that. We didn't have a photograph of the actual target we were coming for. Therefore, we can't sort of positively or negatively see that it's him or not. He claims to have no form of ID, something the enforcement team have heard many times before. A valid document will confirm if he's telling the truth or not. Oh. OK, we've now found a South African passport with the gentleman that we have arrested his photograph in it and the name Patrick Agbo. But I believe that that passport's not genuine. He's told us he's from Nigeria and his photograph is now in a South African passport. And now we have evidence that the gentleman we have arrested has been using the name Patrick Agbo. May not be his real name, but we know he's been using it. 
Yes? It's not my own. It's not yours. I'll mind you that you're under arrest, okay? You're under caution. Say anything you do, so it will be noted and maybe used in evidence, okay? So I'm going to ask you now, is this your passport? It's not my passport. It has your picture in it. It's not me. That is your picture. It's not my picture. It's not my, that is not my passport. I'm not, I'm not the one inside, I'm not the one inside. Can I just maybe point out that you do have a marking on your face which is also present in this picture? It's not, it's not me, it's not me. It's not me. Right, you're, you're making it worse for yourself, but we'll carry this on at the police station, okay? okay? You're making it a lot worse. By sitting lying to me, you're making it worse. All I'm right? Not, I'm not lying to you. You are lying to me, okay? Why I lie? I'm not lying to you. It's you're telling me, me that's not your picture when I'm I can see that it is. I know you don't come from South Africa, but you're I'm in possession. Mm -hmm. You're in possession of a South African passport, and I need to know why you've got it. Okay? I'm not lying. All right, that's fine. A lot of people we encounter do have uh, various identities. It's easier for them to get benefits or medical aid under another name. I don't get benefit from you. I'm not saying you, I'm saying a lot of people we encounter, once they exhaust one name and they're still trying to stay in the country illegally, they'll just uh, try to adopt another name, start using that. Mm -hmm. okay. The Nigerian man was sentenced to four months in prison for possession of a forged document. He was also listed as an overstayer after breaching the conditions in his visa that was issued in Lagos. During 2008, in Britain, over 10,000 arrests were made by enforcement teams. Coming up, UK Border Force goes to Nigeria and meets the officers who root out the forgeries. These are readily available on the street. I don't believe that this is a genuine wedding certificate. It's genuine documents. Genuine documents. And London's immigration team grills staff at a West End steakhouse. We need an address to release you too. So we have to know where you're living. Lagos, Nigeria, is one of the biggest cities in Africa. By 2015, its population will have reached 25 million. Poverty is rife, and for those looking for a way out, Britain is the gateway to a new life. The Home Office receives so many applications from Nigerians wanting to come to Britain that they have a team of officers in Lagos to police the process. Joe Doran is one of these officers. It's Wednesday morning, and he's on his way to work. Uh, we have an unusual route coming into work here. We have several routes to getting into work. Um, I've decided to take the boat today, mainly because the traffic sometimes can take 10 minutes, sometimes it can take over an hour. This does beat the tube on the way to work in the morning. Lagos is a vibrant place. It's uh, definitely got character and soul. Uh, it, uh, it, it can be very dangerous at times, but uh, as long as you abide by the security restrictions that are given to us, it's generally OK. My role is an entry clearance officer here at the British Deputy High Commission in Lagos, and I consider uh, visa applications for Nigerian citizens who wish to travel and visit the UK or settle in the UK. Officer Doran is based at the British Deputy High Commission. Morning. Morning Around 10,000 fraudulent documents are submitted with applications every year. Forgeries are readily available on the streets of Lagos. Some are right on the doorstep of the High Commission. Officer Doran is just one of the 34 entry clearance officers who decide if an applicant is suitable to enter the UK. This gentleman has been called in for interview today. As I was going through his documents, I noticed that his birth certificate, on the format of it, it contains spelling mistakes. Um, his wedding certificate that he gave has been signed by a registrar whose documents ha we know have been uh, abused. For example, here's a blank one, um, and these are readily available on the streets of um, Lagos, and that you can just fill the parts in yourself. 
The man has also submitted a suspect copy of his sponsor's passport. I mean, this photocopy of a passport, I mean, that has been photo that is a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. That has been photocopied so many times that the details are no longer really clear. All right, if you can just call in this gentleman for me, please. The man has submitted documents he maintains are genuine. Now Joe must decide if his story is credible. Morning, sir. Just come and take a seat for me. Yes. The application form, did you complete it yourself? Yes, sir. And are all the details correct? Yes, sir. Why do you wish to go to the UK? For family visits. What's your relationship with your sponsor? Cousin. First cousin, second cousin? First cousin. How many children does he have? Mm. This is your cousin, you're going to be staying with him? Uh, he's my cousin, but yeah. I don't... You do know, because you wrote it in the application form. Uh, but I think it's two, two children now. Two children? Yeah. All right, why did you write one child in your application form? That's what hit your, your no, sponsor cousin. has got, yes. No, I, I thought... You forgot? I think it's... OK. Are all these documents you've provided to me here, are they all genuine? It's original. Yeah. yeah. So, you're saying that your wedding certificate... Yes. ..is genuine? It's genuine, yeah. Original. Your bank statement is genuine? It's genuine. The birth certificate of your child is genuine. Yes. What registry office was this registered at? Eh? Where did you register your child's birth? I think it's a Ikeja. Ikeja? Yeah, you, uh, is that, you sure? Eh? Huh? Are you sure? Hmm, where can you stick with this? Do you know what registry office you were married at? Eh? Huh? Do you know what registry office you were married at? Registrar office. The registrar office is, the, is Ikeja. OK, Regist and where did you register your child's birth? My birth file. I think it's the case I got. OK, you see this? I can obtain this from on the streets in Lagos. It's signed by exactly the same registrar that you are stating completed your marriage ceremony. Yes. OK? No, no. And that's a blank one that I can just fill in. Yeah? Grace Adolu? Grace Adolu. OK? OK, are you telling me the truth? Sir? Are you telling me the truth? Yes. You are. The applicant is sticking to his story, but Joe is not convinced. The UK immigration officers have been working in Calais since 2002. It's their job to protect the border by stopping the clandestines who hide in lorries who want to enter Britain illegally. It's 2 a.m. and the crew are halfway into their shift. Officer Dave Percival has been working at Calais for three years and has seen nearly every trick in the book. As you can see on this vehicle, it's got a tilt cord that goes through all the loops uh, on the wagon and then it goes through the winder uh, with a seal on the back, so that's quite a secure vehicle. So vehicles without those, you can just pull the curtain up or, or even just open the back door. So you do need to have a little bit of security. Like this one that's just come in now, it's got no tilt cord. So you can undo all of these and then uh, just lift the curtain out. They have the latest kit, heartbeat monitors and CO2 probes. But sometimes, all you need is a torch. No seal! So you're automatically working on to it, Willoughby. It is, isn't it? Check old eagle holes out over here. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Hello, mate. Hey, hello. Hey. Come on. This way. Here, this way. They've found what's known as an axle grabber. Yeah. 
at some point between the vehicle parking up and the vehicle coming through, someone's climbed onto the axle of the vehicle. So now our priority is to get him off and make sure that he's safe because he looks like he's quite agile, so he might try and do a runner. Stand up there for me. Yes. One person? One? Sure. Where are you from? Oh, Vietnam. Vietnam? Yeah, it's very unusual to get Vietnamese hiding on the axle of a vehicle, which automatically for me thinks there must be someone else somewhere, so either in another vehicle or inside this one. The vehicle is clear. Good news for the driver. Each clandestine could cost him a fine of £2,000 if he has failed to carry out the proper security checks. Where have you come from? Belgium? Yeah? Belgium, yeah? He's not going to talk, is he? Yeah, papers for Fronte? The axle grabber isn't saying much, but his paperwork tells some of his story. Just one? Papers from the French saying that it was removed. I think it said yesterday. He was caught by the French only yesterday. UK border agency staff follow the procedure and hand him back to the French. In a few hours, he could be released to risk his life once again. We hear stories quite regularly about people that have fallen off axles and been crashed under the wheels. It just shows the desperation of people, really, that they're that desperate to get to the UK that they will risk their lives for it. Hiding in lorries isn't the only way to get into the UK illegally. In Lagos, Nigeria, the black market in fake documents is booming. And back at the British Deputy High Commission, Entry Clearance Officer Joe Doran has looked further into his applicant's case. He has noticed some alarming similarities with a previous fraudulent application. This gentleman, who's also wearing the same shirt, same jacket and same tie, uh, was refused only a few weeks ago. Uh, when he applied, he also submitted all the same documents our applicant now has submitted. The fact that they're wearing the same shirt, same tie and same jacket says to me that they are going to the same agent and I believe that this is a package, a new package, which has just started circulating. I'm just going to see what his relationship is between him and the previous application because uh, they're all claiming to be the same person's cousin. Thank you. Hello, sir. Take a seat there for me. Thank you for being so patient with us. Just want to confirm that you're employed as a lecturer at uh, Babcock University. Babcock University, yeah. How many students go to Babcock University? Uh, over 50 students. Huh? That's the whole population? Uh, yeah, it's 50 it's, students. Yeah. Do you know a student by the name of Toheeb Yusuf? Mm. I can't hear you very well. You Let can't me. hear me very well. Yeah. Okay. I'm asking you, you're a lecturer at Babcock University yes. where there are only 50 students. Do you know a student at Andre, that university uh, by the name of Toheeb Yusuf? Yeah, I think. Yes? Yeah. Is he a relative of yours? Are you Everybody? related eh? to Mr. Yusuf? What is it? Are you related to Mr. Yusuf? Yes, my cousin. He's your cousin? Yes, my cousin. Do you know this person? You don't know this person? No. This person is your cousin. This is Toheeb Yusuf. Eh? This is Toheeb Yusuf, yes. your cousin, who studies at your university where you are employed as a lecturer. He has produced exactly the same documents, documents. that you have. Exactly the same. 
Okay, you signed your application form, okay, and on that declaration, it tells you what the consequences are of making false representations, okay? So think about your answers. Is there anything you wish to say about your child's birth certificate? The wedding certificate. Is there anything you wish to tell me about these now? For the certificate, barrier certificate. Yeah. I've already showed you that these are readily available yes. on the street. I don't believe that this is a genuine wedding certificate. Is there anything you wish to tell me? Or are these documents still genuine? It's genuine documents. Genuine documents. Okay, thank you very much. You'd like to take a seat outside. You'll be given your decision in a few moments, okay? Okay, sir. Before making his final decision, Joe must refer the case to his entry clearance manager, Maurice Harper. This gentleman who, in interview, he said by the name was his cousin. When I showed him the picture, he didn't know who he was. And all the sponsored documents are exactly the same. It does look like a package, doesn't it, Joe? Yeah. The writing is the same on the application, which is obviously yeah. a whole package. The, and I reckon the letters right. are identical, so yeah. that's fine. There's definitely a refusal. Excellent. Thank you very much. Like almost 53,000 other cases a year, the man will be denied entry to Britain. Thank you for being so patient with us. I know it's taken some time. I have made my decision, and my decision has been to refuse your application. In brief, it's because you have submitted forged documents to me. Do you have anything to say to me? I don't know. There you go, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. I think he took it quite well. It's surprising at how many people will not um, appeal that decision. Uh, they will then reapply, apologising profusely, telling, saying that they got ill-advised by an agent. Uh, they completed the form wrong, it was completed by an agent, they didn't realise that they didn't sign that declaration at the back to say that it was completed by an agent. At the moment it doesn't automatically get banned for 10 years. It's only when he reapplies will the ban start from today's date. With so many fraudsters caught out every day, it's physically impossible for the police to arrest them all. So the man is free to go. Coming up, the man applying for a UK visa despite the fact he's been living in Britain for two years. Do you do any work? Casual, casual work. Mm -hmm. And it's showtime as enforcement officers hit London's West End. Is this your real name? Game's up, yeah? Beckett House, London. The enforcement team have a tip-off that a restaurant in the West End is hiring illegal immigrants. The intention is to talk to all staff present at the address and identify any persons illegally present or without the legal right to work in the UK. OK, everybody happy with what they're doing? Any questions? <laughs> The restaurant is a Scotch steakhouse popular with tourists on London's Charing Cross Road. The team splits up. Officers Lippington and Mitchell head downstairs to the kitchen whilst Officer Purewell questions the waitress. How long, how long have you had your visa for? Um, One year, two years, three years, three months. So how long have you been in this country? Um, two and a half, maybe three months. No, not three, no more. Three months. Yeah. Okay. When does your student visa finish? Um, soon. When? When does that expire? I don't know if it's soon, maybe two weeks. When does it finish? What are you studying at the moment? Oh, sorry? What do you study? Um, just college, yeah. just sometimes. Okay. Just... Do check. Are you studying English? Yeah, just on English. Okay, we're just going to do some checks with the Home Office. We're going to, we're going to make a phone call because we have records of all, all visas issued. Can you just wait here? Yeah. Actually, you know what? So come around here. Come around here. The waitress is Ukrainian and says she's a student. If she's telling the truth, the officers will find her records on the Home Office database. Down in the kitchen, officers Lippington and Mitchell are speaking to a chef. 
He says he's from Mongolia. Um, speak English? Just a Tiny little bit. OK, don't yeah. worry. Yes, go upstairs. Turn everything off. Yeah. Just turn it all off. OK. We just got this one. Have you got any ID on you? Yeah. Any ID? Yeah. Drive's licence, passport? It's not here. It's not here? Where is it? It's at home? Yeah. OK. OK, what's your name? Um, Sarangiri. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. E-L. E-L. And what's your family name? Sarangiri. It's John, John Dutch. J, J or G? It's German, it's J. J. How old are you? 26. And you're from Mongolia, yeah? How long have you been in the UK for? Um, three, and half, three and a half two, years. Yeah, about three, about three yeah. years. And what leave have you got to be in the UK? What? What leave have you got? You've got a work permit, visa. Visa. You've got a visa, have you? What type of visa? Student, student. Sorry? Student. Student. Yeah. Student visa. Just do a check. Okay. When, when are you going? When are you going to college then? When are you going to college next? Um, now it's just uh, working just part time. When do you go to? When have you been to college? Have you been to college recently? Um, yeah. When, when's the last time you've been to college? Um, last two weeks. Two weeks ago. Yeah. So you are you are you going to college at the moment? Not yet. Why not? Because no. now I need money. So you're not you're not studying at the moment. So have you come to this country to work or have you come to this country to study? I, need, I want to learn English. Is that why you've come here? Yeah. Is that the main reason why you're in this country, to go to yeah. college? Yeah. Okay. Basically, first of all, she's told, she's told my colleague that she's a student. She didn't, know, she didn't know where she was studying. She said she last went to college like two, sort of two weeks ago. She's, she's coming from the truth. I didn't, I didn't believe her at all. The most that foreign students are allowed to work during term time is 20 hours a week. Both interviewees say they're students, but the Mongolian chef has just admitted to working 40 hours. Listen to me, now you're here on a student visa, and you'll say, you're, you tell me you're, you're working here 40 hours a week. When are you studying? So you're telling me you're working 40 hours a week and you're studying as well? Do you work, do you work 40 hours a week every week? No, just sometimes. Just sometimes. How many hours a week are you allowed to work when you're studying? Like maximum is 20. 20 hours, yeah? So how can you, if you're working 40 hours, you're working more hours than you're allowed to, aren't you? And you've been working, not studying. Yeah? OK, that's lovely. Let's go with a no trace then. Yeah. All right. Thank you for your help. Nothing. Thanks, bye. Bye-bye. No, it's a definitely a no trace. He doesn't appear to be on their database, which could mean he's given them a false name. We can't find a visa for you. No, we can't find a visa. Where did you get your visa from? From Mongolia. From Mongolia. Yeah. I'm not believing anything you're telling me at the moment. All right, because we can't find any trace in the systems. You're not able to show me a passport. I find it all quite difficult to believe, yeah? There's another way to find his ID. Where's the scanner? I think he's going to have to go to the police station. scanner? Yeah, let's scan him. Officers Lippington and Mitchell are looking for a fingerprint match on their biometric database. In Calais, 20 million tonnes of freight pass through the port every year. Even with British and French border controls, it's impossible to search every lorry passing through the port. This driver says he has already been stopped by the French. Two. No, me. Four. Me. Can we open? The driver's indicated he's had four taken out. Four must be looking on it today. The UK team want to check for themselves to make sure none were missed. There's something wrapped up, yeah. wrapped up in Definitely. black bags. Until I get down there, I can't actually say whether it's a clandestine. My colleague is going to look at that one. I'm going to look at this one. Um, we don't know what it is at the moment. It could just be bags. I'm going to go down. I'm not sure whether if this one is OK. Yeah. Oh, moving? Yeah. OK. Hello. OK. <laughs> well, that one is open anyway. Hello? Hello? 
you want to take it off? You OK? Nationality? Vietnam? From Vietnam? OK. Are you OK? You're OK? OK. Just have to make sure, because they've been covered in uh, plastic bags over their head, that they're all right. The fact that they've wrapped themselves in plastic is something that we've seen quite a few times. It's very, very dangerous because they don't know how long they're going to be in the lorry for. Um, but they do it because they think they can get a, around the CO2 control. They think that by breathing into a plastic bag, it's going to contain the carbon dioxide that they produce by breathing so that it's not going to be in the vehicle. So when we probe it, we won't pick it up. Obviously, it doesn't really work and they're putting their lives at risk. You all right? Kalachi. Kalai? You're still in Calais, yeah. That? Very silly. Doesn't work. We still found you. See how much sweat he's got on him from sitting in that bag for too long. That's the bag the man was hiding in. It's been taped in the middle, so it's, it's almost human length. With no documents and no answers, the team have no idea who these people are. They're handed over to the French, but could be back again within hours. Oh, they will try again. No doubt about it. These guys are pretty desperate to get to the UK. And as you can see, they'll, they'll use any means We'll probably see them again tomorrow. We might have even seen them yesterday. Back in Lagos, hopeful visa applicants arrive at the British Deputy High Commission. Applicants are called for interview when their application forms alone are not enough to qualify for a visa. This morning, Officer Andy Megan is dealing with a difficult case. The applicant lived in Britain as an illegal immigrant for two and a half years under a false identity. He's returned to Nigeria to apply for a legitimate UK visa. He's decided, probably on the advice of a solicitor, to come back to Nigeria and, and make his application properly as the spouse of someone in, in the United Kingdom. Although his wife is from Lagos, the couple met in Britain and they had their first child there. All of this while he was still an illegal immigrant. Despite his dishonest past, he is now prepared to tell all. By coming clean, he hopes he will be allowed to live in Britain legally. The man has agreed to be filmed, but does not want his face shown. So when did you first go to the UK? Yeah, that was 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how long were you in the UK for before you two guys met up? Yeah, I think about two and a half years. So. Two and a half years? Yeah. So what did you do for money during this time, two and a half years? Yeah, just uh, uh, the guide, I mean, I've got a friend as well uh -huh. who accommodated me and sometimes uh, he do give me some money, accommodated me, I don't have Did you do any work? Casual, casual no, work? No. No Come one. on, you've, you've told the truth and everything else here. Yeah, no. No, you didn't take any jobs? No. Okay. No. Have you ever applied for a place to study in the UK? No. No? You sure? No, it was early 2004. Early 2004, so before yeah. all this? Yeah. <laughs> I remember you told yeah. me you yeah. applied yeah. for yeah. I applied 2004. That You're was, married uh, now, she's allowed to hit you. Yeah, um, <laughs> that was, uh, which school is that? University of East London. Okay, an outmoded term, but when did you guys start dating? Well, that's, um, huh? was it in April? April, I think April, May, I can't really What, in say. 2007? Yeah. Did you tell her at that time how you got to the UK? Uh, to be honest, I didn't firstly told her. I wouldn't have, never mind. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I didn't tell her. Okay. But then, um, as time goes on, she was to know. Yeah. But later... Uh, later on, you told her. Told her. So when did you contact your solicitor? Last year. Last year, yeah. Maybe January. So. Yeah, he said he's going on holiday when he comes back. Yeah. So after then... So we're talking early 2008? Yeah. yeah. What did they say? Was, so he said, no, 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 go back to Nigeria. Okay, okay. Okay, I've got no other questions for you. 
If you want to wait outside, I'll look through the documents I'll, and I'll let you know what my decision is. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back in the London Steakhouse, and the Ukrainian waitress can't be found on the Home Office database. Do you want to go to a police station? No, you don't. Do you want to go to police stations? Are not very nice. It's really hot outside, and the cells are not very hot, nice. So, are you going to tell me the truth? You don't have a visa. So how did you get? How did you come to the UK? Did you come in on an airplane? Did you come on a train? Train. The train, yeah? yeah? You came on the train? Okay. And when you came to this country, did you see an immigration officer? Um, yep. And explain to me what happened when you came. When you came. Did you show the immigration officer your passport? Um, yep. And what, what, did you have a visa in your passport? No. And did the immigration officer ask you any questions? No, no questions. No questions. So they, they didn't ask you no questions and they let you through? That doesn't I happen. Just, I just buy in Poland in like market. Well, how do we, can we not get into your house? Can you not show us your passport? No, no good to, letter. You can't show us your passport. Okay, so somebody brought you here illegally. Yeah? Thank you. That's all we wanted to know. She finally admits she doesn't have a UK visa and has paid an agent 3,000 euros to get into Britain. But the situation is that you've told me under caution that you've entered the UK illegally by using someone else's documents to come here. Um, you're aware that you're illegally, therefore you're under arrest. We're going to take your personal belongings and we're going to go to our van. Do you understand that? OK. Now the officers need the woman's passport to begin the removal process. She has told them it's at her house. This will be their next destination. We're going to go to the house. We're going to see if we can find their passport. If we can find their passport, we're going to send her home. Just take a seat. Watch your head as you get in. Nice and slow. Just take a seat. Back inside the restaurant, officers Lippington and Mitchell have a positive match for the Mongolian chef. Possible identification. Oh. Let's see. Hang on, let's write it down. Is this you? Is this you? Is this your real name? Game's up, yeah? Is that you? There's nothing to worry about, don't worry about. Nice yeah. You're going to tell us the truth, yeah? Yeah, Asylum. finished. Date of birth, 18 for the 11th, 79. Yeah. You're good at yeah, but not that good. Ah. Oh. You've seen immigration before? Yeah, he's a face. We get there in the end, and you've just caused yourself so much more trouble by lying. He gave them a false name, but now they can cross-check his real identity with the Home Office database, and there's a surprising result. Is he not a No, he's been removed. He's come back again. Coming up, a painful decision for the Ukrainian waitress as she's forced to choose between her friends and being locked up in a detention centre. OK, which one is it? I don't know which house is it. In central London, officers Lippington and Mitchell now know the identity and immigration status of the Mongolian chef. He's a failed asylum seeker who's previously been removed from Britain. This gentleman gives us a false story under caution. We've got his true identity and we know that he's a Mongolian who was previously removed. So what we're trying to do now is find out how he's re-entered the country. We're checking the... We know what his real name is. We're checking the systems now to find out if, he's re, if we've got any record of re-entering the country. In August last year, we sent you home, didn't we? Yes? Right. So how did you get back in? Well, someone just told me I'm just using someone's passport again. You used someone else's passport again, yeah? Was it a Mongolian passport that you used when you came back in? Was it a friend's passport or was it your passport? It wasn't a friend or anything. Did you pay money to someone? How much money? You paid a thousand pounds. This gentleman is under arrest for illegal entry. Okay? You're under arrest for illegal entry. I remind you, you're under caution, yeah? 
The man was sent back to Mongolia after spending two days in detention. It's not the first time he's been here. Watch your head, be careful. In Lagos, Nigeria, Officer Megan has made a decision about the man who lived illegally in Britain but now wants a genuine British visa. Ah, you're there. Yeah. I thought you said you weren't there. Yes. Right. You'll be pleased to know that your solicitor was correct. I'm going to issue you your visa. OK? Oh. So you can go back to the UK. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Shouldn't have done it that way in the first place. Thank you. Thanks God so bless. much. God bless you. The one of the good solicitor, first of all. OK? Thanks Thank so you very much. much. God, God bless you, sir. Thank you. It's an adventure you've had. Thank you. Thank you. You could say they're a bit happy. Madame was quite ecstatic, so she's quite happy. And he's relieved. That's it. Sometimes we do bring a bit of sunshine into people's lives. Not very often. Yeah. Irina, you're going to give me a dress now. In London, the enforcement team need to find the Ukrainian waitress's passport so they can deport her. But she refuses to tell them where she lives. Because her boyfriend's illegal as well, she doesn't want us to go around and have the boyfriend. And she said there's eight other Ukrainian people living there. So I don't think she wants to be responsible for other people's fate. The woman hasn't given them an address, but the team have managed to find one by using her mobile phone. We're going to um, an address in Lewisham. Um, we're going to try and find this Ukrainian lady's passport so we can send her home. Sorry. What's your head here? It's all right, it's all right. Hey, Just come, go on the pavement first, because there's a road. Okay, Number 27, yeah? I'm sorry. It's Number 27, this is your house? No. No, you don't live here then? No. We're going to try the house anyway. I've been given this address as your house. Yeah. OK, all right. We'll try it. We'll try it. If not, we'll go back in the van, all right? Okay, yeah? All right. The address is out of date. The current resident tells the officers a group of Ukrainians moved out months ago. Watch your head. And sit down in the front, or as you said before, please. <laughs> sit down, please. All right, all right. We can't release you without an address. You're, you're illegally in the UK, so we have to know where you're living. We don't like detaining people, and we don't detain them unless we have to. The woman lives with her boyfriend and eight other Ukrainians. But we do need an address. She doesn't want to get them into trouble with immigration. Are you ready to give me a... No, we're not going to take everybody. No, we just need your address um, to verify where you live. I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to your boyfriend. I'll, 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 I'll call him. You need to think about yourself. You need to think about yourself, don't you? Will you take us there? Will you take us there? Will you take us to your house? Please. Could you show us, yeah? She's given us a, a, um, a road, which is just around the corner from here, um, and she's 50-50 about giving us, telling us where she lives, so we're going to take her there. Um, and I've told her her options, and it's time to her now to give us, tell us where she lives, otherwise she's just going to be detained. You got them keys? Down right down here, yeah? Callum, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got yeah. them keys, yeah. innit? Um, yeah. Okay, which one is it? I really know which house is it. Are you not going to tell us? I can't, sorry. You have to tell us. You have to tell us. She can't bring herself to give up her friends. It leaves the team with no option. Without her passport, she will have to serve time in a detention centre waiting for her emergency removal papers. If it means she's in detention for weeks, maybe a month, that's going to happen. Um, we've given all the options, we've helped her as much as we can, um, but we've, we have to draw a line somewhere. She's going to be detained yeah. and we're going to send her home. While the Ukrainian waitress was in Colnbrook Detention Centre, her passport was handed in by a friend. She claimed asylum, which was refused, and after spending over two months in detention, was removed back to the Ukraine.